Are you looking for a space where you will learn to improve your mental strength, emotional health, and heal your insecurities from the inside out? Take the first step to living a more meaningful life with the Better Me with Body by Brie podcast. I'm your host, Brie. I'm a certified personal trainer, entrepreneur, and mother of three. I've helped empower thousands of women to take action through fitness, nutrition, meditation, personal development, and aligning thoughts with action. This podcast is for those who are ready to feel inspired and motivated to live a more purposeful life. Let's grow together. I'm sure you've heard the hype of buying organic foods and how much better it is for you. Does it really matter? Are there foods that are more important than others to make sure that they're organic? Is it worth the extra money? We will answer all these questions as well as what organic actually means in today's podcast and how you can save a little bit of money. Let's get started. Welcome to the podcast, friends. Um, So I love organic food. (laughs) I'm kind of a freak about it, but it's expensive and it gets really expensive to feed a family all of this organic food. So I kind of wanted to break down what does it mean to be organic? What labels are you looking for? What things can you save your money on? What do you really want to prioritize if you are on a budget? Like what's the top four things to prioritize if you are going to get organic and how can you make it more affordable? So we're going to cover all of this in today's um, podcast. So the first thing before we start is I want you to understand what is organic. Like what does it mean when you see these labels that are like this is organic or this is made with organic ingredients or this is free range? So we're going to kind of go through some of the phrases that you commonly see um, so that you can know what they mean, what, what I'm talking about. So the first one is 100% organic, which means no synthetic ingredients are allowed by law, okay? The other one is just organic, not 100%, and that means at least 95% of the ingredients are organically produced. The other one is made with organic ingredients. That means at least 70% of the ingredients are organic. And then the other 30% are from a list approved by the USDA. Um, Free range or free roaming means the animals had um, some amount of outdoor access. And it doesn't really provide a lot of information. So it could really look a lot of different ways. Natural or all natural does not mean organic. So there's really no standard definition um, except for with meat and poultry, then they cannot contain any artificial flavors, colors, chemical preservatives, or synthetic ingredients. But the claims are not checked. So if it says natural or all natural, it means nothing. So if you've seen like the, um, oh shoot, what's that? There's a brand of turkey meat that's sliced and they always have like natural turkey or all natural turkey. Like that means nothing, okay? Because the claims are not checked. So they can say whatever they want. So what I like to look for is I like to buy Simple Truth Organic because those products usually are the same price as your regular products. So like if I'm gonna buy oatmeal and there's a Simple Truth oatmeal, it's that like little green it's like the Kroger version of organic, but it ha- it by law has to be organic. Um, usually, it's the exact same price. I will always go for the organic um, just because I know it's a cleaner alternative and it's the same price, so why not? Even if it's like um, Simple Truth peanut butter, Simple Truth Pop-Tarts, Simple Truth cereal, like I get Simple Truth everything and it's usually not more expensive. So that's a way that you can save money on that. Now, why is it so important? Like, why do we want to eat organic? There's a lot of crap in our food. (laughs) Like, I don't know if you've ever watched Food Inc. And that is, I mean, maybe don't watch it if you ever want to feel good about eating your food again. But um, just whenever you take food and you're trying to like produce it for the masses, they're going to cut corners. And so they do things like put hormones in our meat, which actually speed up puberty for our kids, um, or pesticides that stay on our fruits and vegetables um, and our grains, or, you know, um, 
having sick chickens, like thousands of chickens stuck in these disgusting cages and they're all diseased and like they're laying sick eggs and we're eating that. And I'm a firm believer that what you are, what you eat. And so I don't want my chickens to be sick and diseased and like (laughs) falling apart. Like I want healthy, happy chickens. So for me, I think some things definitely need to be organic. And when I can, I buy everything organic when possible. But like I said, the simple truth version is the same price. So I'll buy like simple truth ketchup because it doesn't have the corn syrup in it, you know? So anytime you can reach for the simple truth, this is not sponsored. I just love it so much because it's affordable and it makes it so easy and you don't have to sit and read labels. If it has the simple truth green label, you are good to go. So the things that I try to buy organic the most are my fruits and veggies, my dairy products, meat, and then grains like um, wheat or oatmeal because those are all sprayed with chemicals and Roundup and pesticides. So let's break down each one of those categories and I can help you kind of choose what works best for your family and then you can decide what you want to prioritize, okay? So as far as eggs, Um, The USDA regulates organic, okay? So organic eggs have to come from free-range chickens fed with 100% organic feed. So that means that they don't have, they're not administered antibiotics. They're not on any hormones, no arsenic, no poultry slaughter byproducts. um, And it's a very reliable standard. So it's usually a good indication that the free range requirements are enforced. So if it says USDA organic, that's what you're looking for, okay? On any label really is USDA organic. So um, I'm sure you've heard like different phrases for eggs, like hormone-free, cage-free. I'm gonna break those down for you, okay? Because it can get a little confusing on what's the most important. So hormone-free means that all eggs in the US um, are hormone free, but most of them are because actually the FDA banned giving hens hormones in like the 1950s. So most of them should be hormone free. So if it's labeled like that, it's probably just for ads so that you feel better about it. Cage free means that they can walk freely, but they're in an indoor enclosure with um, like food and water and they don't get any outdoor access. And it could be like a large crowded shed. So It's okay, but there's like thousands of chickens. If you ever want to feel disgusted, look it up. There's thousands of chickens that are just like roaming in this tiny little shed and they're like on top of each other and some of them are like dead in the corner. It's not good. So I usually go for free range. So free range, um, the hens have access to outdoors um, once they're mature. And there's no regulation on size or quality or whatever. So that can get tricky. Like they can literally put a tiny little outdoor thing. But um, the USDA verifies cage-free and free-range labels so that you can kind of tell the difference. Um, Now, the best one that you can get if you can afford it, I'm just telling you like good, better, best. Best one you can do is pasture rage pasture raised. Um, So it refers to hens that spend most of their life outdoors on an open field, grazing on grass, and um, they supplement with feed. And um, it allows them to exhibit the most natural behaviors from roaming and perching. And um, basically, it means that like they they meet the standards set by the Humane Farm Animal Care Association. So that's my favorite, okay, is pasture rage. That's usually what I look for. All natural or farm fresh means that the eggs are minim- minimally processed um, and they don't contain any added ingredients. Certified organic means that the birds live in a free-range lifestyle, but they eat on or- organic feed. So they don't have pesticides, fertilizer, chemicals, um, and... So usually I look for organic, pasture-raised. That's the two things I look for. Um, You might also see like omega-3. So all eggs naturally contain omega-3. So 
Um, if they're labeled as omega-3, then it might be enriched with a diet with like flaxseed, algae, fish oil, so that it boosts fatty acid levels. Um, if it says no antibiotics, that's misleading because none of them have antibiotics. Um, vegetarian feed means that hens were fed an all vegetarian diet. So usually it's like corn and so soybeans without any animal byproducts. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's helpful with the eggs. Okay. Because that can get really confusing. So I look for organic pasture raised. That's basically the two that I really look for. Okay. Let's talk about your dairy products. Okay. So some tips with buying dairy um, is you obviously want to choose USDA organic when possible because organic dairy products have more healthy omega-3 fats than conventional dairy. And when you're buying organic, there's no GMOs, antibiotics, or chemicals, um, pesticides, that, pesticides that we're using their produ production. And on top of that, cows are raised on an organic farm. They have pasture. Um, they're like pasture raised so they can roam. It's good for the animal as, and it's good for your health because when you're giving them more space to roam, then they like enhance their nutritional quality of what they're eating, which is what you're eating, right? Whatever the cow eats, you eat. Um, and you might think this is weird, but I am a firm believer that if a cow is treated well, like you're not taking on the stresses of the cow. If a cow is sick, and diseased and stressed, like you're eating all of that. <laughs> I am a firm believer in that. You might think I'm weird, but whatever. Um, the other thing to look for is RGBH free. This is the biovine um, growth hormone, and it's, gen it's a genetically engineered hormone that increases milk production. So if you are choosing conventional dairy, you want to look for a label that has cows not treated with RBGH, okay? Or it could say RBST. Um, I know that's getting a little, like, I know. Okay. Um, or you choose grass-fed. So grass-fed dairy is definitely healthier. It's more humane than like animal factories, which are what where most of your milk is coming from. And um, it's usually fed like a grain-fed um, dairy. So it's a lot healthier. Um, when possible, the best option always is to choose small uh, family farms. Like it's not always easy uh, to do that, but sometimes you have those products in your grocery store and that is a great way to support small business and also like they're not trying to bust out as much milk as possible, like they're doing it the right way. <laughs> so that's what I like to is look for like farms that actually are small business farms. Okay, let's talk about meat. So like I said, you are what, what you eat. So it is important to consider the food and the treatment of the animal that you're eventually consuming. So animals from like factory farms, they're not only living in poor conditions, but they're also prone to diseases that spread from feed that are pumped with antibiotics to aid in an increase in fat on the body. And then many of the farms contribute to climate change. So they use fertilizers and chemicals that pollute the land and the water sources. And also um, like grass fed meat is not just better for the environment, but it's better for the animals and it's better for you as well. So, um, Actually, there was this study done by the Cleveland Clinic that said grass-fed meat is so nutritionally superior to factory farmed meat that it's practically a different food. So in a study in 2015 conducted by the Consumer Reports, it compared – this was fascinating to me. It compared 300 conventional and grass-fed meat samples – and researchers discovered that 18% of the conventional beef samples were contaminated with superbugs, um, which is the hazardous bacteria that um, are uh, resistant to three or more classes of antibiotics, compared with just 6% of the grass-fed beef samples. Um, so that's something to consider. Like you are eating those diseases. You are, and you're eating those superbugs and they are getting into your body. 
So the best choice is grass-fed. If you can, look for labels on the meat that are certified grass-fed. Um, and what this means is that their diet is certified um, that they were only raised in grass open pastures. The treatment of the animals are free to graze instead of being confined to cramped living spaces. Um, as far as antibiotics and hormones go, they're guaranteed antibiotic and growth hormone free. And as far as the origin, all animals are born and raised on family farms in the United States. So if you can't choose grass fed, Okay, grass-fed is the best choice, but when you can't choose that, then try to do USDA organic. Okay, that's the second best option. Um, so even though they're like not quite as high as the grass-fed, they are higher than those from conventional like meat services. Um, so if you choose the organic, the diet is raised on a blended diet of like grain and corn and grazing on grass. The treatment is that it requires cattle to live in a way that accommodates their natural behavior so they're not like confined to spaces for too long and the animals are not subjected to antibiotics and chemicals. They might still have growth hormones. Um, and then GMOs, in order for the meat to be certified organic, animals are fed 100% organic feed and they avoid all GMOs and synthetic ingredients. So for me, that's worth um, the extra, like I think it's a dollar or two extra if you do organic. Um, but again, every family is different and you have to prioritize where you spend your money and what is important to you. Okay, let's talk about grains. So um, for grains, there was a study done. Um, shoot, I have to I'll reference um, where this came from, but it said that um, organic grains have higher nutrient contents than conventional counterparts, and that breads made with those grains are more nutrient dense with fewer additives. So the reason why is because I don't know if you've seen the difference between bleached and unbleached flour, but a lot of times what we do in America is we take the entire wheat stock, blend it all up. We don't actually separate the wheat from like the stem that's not healthy for you. And we just blend it all in a blender and then we bleach the crap out of it so it's white and it's fine. And then we add synthetic vitamins back in. So that's what bleached enriched flour is. And that's why so many people have a hard time digesting it. They get bloated, gassy, stomach aches. They might have um, gluten sensitivities because it's not supposed to be made like that. <laughs> You're supposed to take the wheat from the stock and only only um, blend up the seeds. So I only buy unbleached flour. Um, that is where I'm not, they're not taking out all of the natural vitamins and minerals and putting in synthetic ones. You're getting the natural vitamins and minerals. Um, and I do try to get organic unbleached flour just because I, I know like they're blending up all the pesticides and GMOs and then you're eating that. So my favorite brand is Dave's Killer Bread. Um, it's not crazy expensive, but I don't get bloated from it. I don't get a headache. I feel so good. Um, even their like Dave's Killer Bread white bread is made with quinoa, spelt, amaranth, um, sprouts, and it is organic. And so like you're getting all those nutrients into your body. So that's my very favorite is Dave's Killer Bread anything. Like their bagels, their um, English muffins, their bread. I don't ever buy anything else. And then as far as like flour goes, if I'm going to make like cookies or bread or whatever, I buy King Arthur's organic unbleached flour. That's the best. Okay. Um. The next one and last one that we're going to talk about is fruits and vegetables. Um, so you don't have to buy fruits and vegetables organic, but I don't know if you've heard of the Dirty Dozen list, but there are certain foods that are more contaminated than others because we eat the skin or because they're porous. And so they absorb the pesticides more than other foods. So I'm going to tell you the ones that are like in the dirty dozen that you should definitely buy organic. And then the ones that maybe you could save your money on. Um, okay. So the 
So, and this is what the Environmental Working Group, the EWG, it's a nonprofit organization, but they, this is what they suggest that you buy organic because of the Dirty Dozen. Okay. So strawberries are at the top of the list um, for organic because it is the most pesticide contaminated food. Um, and that's because more than 90% of strawberries sampled tested positive for two or more pesticides. So if you're concerned about pesticides, maybe, you know, go organic on the strawberries. But also on the list is spinach, kale, nectarines, grapes, cherries, peaches, pears, bell peppers, celery, and tomatoes. Um, I'm also adding broccoli and cauliflower to the list because they're super porous. I'm not really sure why they're not on this list already, but I usually make sure to buy organic with those. And then some fruits and vegetables that are less likely to be contaminated because they have like a thicker shell that you either peel off or it's harder to get in is um, avocados, corn, pineapple, onions, bananas, eggplant, and kiwi. So those things have like a harder shell that you're kind of peeling off. So if you want to save some money, you can just go, you know, regular on those. Okay, I know this was a lot of information. I hope it was helpful. Um, let me know what you buy organic and what you don't buy organic. Or maybe you don't buy anything organic and that's fine too. I'm literally here to just inform you and let you make your own decisions. I'm not here to shame. I'm not here to say like if you don't buy organic, you're bad. Nothing like that. You decide what works for your family. So to recap, my top four sections that I like to buy organic are eggs, um, dairy products, meat, and then my fruit and veggies and grains. <laughs> so basically everything. <laughs> so let me know what questions you have. Um, I notice a huge difference in my kids. Like when they're not eating the, all of the dyes and the added like um, sweeteners and, and artificial sugars and stuff, they are way better. So I am kind of doing it more for selfish reasons. But I just feel better. Like I don't have headaches as much. I don't feel bloated. Um, Mila gets really bad rashes if she, even if she just like doesn't have organic diapers because she's allergic to the bleach in the cotton in the diapers. Like that's how sensitive she is. So over the years, I've just become kind of obsessed with this stuff and I love it so much and I love how we feel. So that's just what we do. I'm here to share any information I can to help your life be better. And I will talk to you later. Thank you for joining us in today's episode. If you liked the content and want to hear more, remember to hit that subscribe button and write a review. As a small business owner, I appreciate it more than you know. If you are looking for a program to help with self-confidence, to lose weight, get in shape, and work on your mental, physical, and emotional health, check out my training programs on www.bodybybree.com. My team and I help to hold you accountable through the Body by Brie app, where you log in to see all your workouts, custom meal plan made specifically for you and your needs, and communication through the messenger. You are never alone when you're on the Body by Brie training program. Click the link in the show notes to get more information on how to transform your life from the inside out.